it's a good question. So I think um, a few things that you want to think about when you're getting started is how you want to position yourself as a brand, what messages, what key messages you want to um, provide to the market. Um, and how you want to look, feel, um, come across what your personality is to your audience, because you want to be you want to be unique, right? So you want to be different to others in the market. So before you kind of get going on any tactics of marketing yourself, you need to decide who you are, what what messages you want to portray to the market, and how you want to come across, what branding you want, because you want to feel consistent. And when you feel consistent, you are much more likely to get people to know, like, and trust you. So what I would say is work on your branding, work on your messages. 80% of the effectiveness of any um tactic is in your messaging and your creative. So your photos, I would say, make sure your photos are high quality. It doesn't have to be professional, but um, even get a friend who's got a really high quality camera and find a good background and and, um, create some good quality photos. Um, And then I would say, get yourself onto socials. So get, I love, love, love LinkedIn because you get 20% organic reach. And I would say one good quality post on LinkedIn a week with a good quality photo um, with some almost some thought leadership content. So something that makes you unique and vulnerable and um, telling your story and having a unique point of view that is much better than a whole bunch of um, kind of rubbish content, you know, like sharing other people. Sharing other people's articles is good, but only if you've got a unique point of view to add to the top of it. So I would get on LinkedIn. Um, You know, if you're starting from scratch, Facebook Lives are great um, because often when you're starting from scratch, you're attracting people who already know you. You're attracting your audience that already knows you. So um, Instagram as well, live content. Um, stories. Um, But once again, just think about what it is that you're saying. Think about what your message is. Think about what your brand stands for, what you stand for, and what you want your audience to do next. So what is your call to action at the end of that content? Well, I've done all that in my business in in many different forms and even the wrong way around. I remember uh, many, many years ago, we owned a clothing company. And to promote the brand, everything had to be really high quality because Mm. we wanted to charge a higher price and a premium price for our product because we also believe that if we paid a little bit more for the production, people would get better value out of it. And I still see people today putting photos and videos of our products on the internet and we haven't sold for 10 years and they're Mm. still using the product. But to promote the product, we used to get a helicopter. So we would ring our uncle and say, hey, uncle, bring your helicopter down to the river. And then my brother and I would hang out the side of the helicopter with a $6,000 camera and we would film. So we were doing that in the early 2000s. But when it came to starting my consulting business, I didn't have those budgets. Mm. But what I did have was I had access to gorgeous backgrounds. And at that stage, 2000 and eight, 2009, I was cabin crew with Emirates Airline. So I could travel around the world and I would blog. I'd blog in New York. I would blog in Munich. I'd blog in London. And all I had was my iPhone one or two all the way back then, but it was enough to get me going. I had a little bit of background. Amazing. I mean, I I love the opportunity of work, which I could have. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. I I love that because I love the quote, if you don't have the resources, you need to be resourceful, right? So what do you have? What friends have you got? What contract can you do? I mean, when I started my business eight years ago, I was doing contra for everything. Someone was a photographer. Great. I'll do some marketing for you. If you do some photography for me, someone built websites. Great. I'll do a contra deal. Then I was even doing it for business coaching for everything just to get started. Right. It's the best way. And, and I find today with content creation, even if you've got your webcam on your computer, you can start a podcast. Mm-hmm. As long as you've got a little bit of good lighting, as long as you've got a little bit of good sound, that's important. But the quality of your content is more important. And, and I know that because I watch some of these podcasts that have terrible production quality, but the value in the message, that thought leadership that you mentioned mm-hmm. is far beyond it. And it's like that breaks all the rules. 
bad yeah. camera, bad audio, bad background, pimply face, but this this content, I'm, I'm, I just want to hold on to it. <laughs> hundred percent. Well, I think there's multiple different sort of types of content and a good brand should have some high quality content that is more professional looking and feeling. And that kind of is more your awareness content. And the next level down should be your engagement content. So one of the things going best with the LinkedIn algorithm right now is like your selfies, right? So people love that authenticity. They love behind the scenes. That's why stories are so big. They love kind of getting a look behind the curtain and seeing what your life's really like or, you know, what your insights are day to day uh, when you walk out of clients or, you know, when you're um, on the run. So there's definitely space for both of them, but I think both of them are important because if they then um, go to your website, for instance, from a story and the quality of your branding on your website, it looks a bit kind of like mishmash, then it's not consistent, then they're not going to want to then continue on to purchase with you. So consistency and quality is really, really important in setting yourself up for success, especially if you want to promote yourself online because people can't meet you face to face and people buy people, right? So if you meet someone face to face, you buy into them. Whereas um, I sort of liken having a kind of not so kind of tight website as wearing tracksuit pants to a networking meeting. So it's like you wouldn't go in um, trying to get clients in your tracksuit pants, right? And that's what you're doing if you're trying to attract online. So if you're even if you're doing a live, you want to push them to a place where the content feels like your website, the content feels consistent um, and, and quality as well. It's so true about that behind the scenes that you mentioned. I spent thousands of dollars bringing in a, a, a film crew, lighting, teleprompter, scripts, and the video has got no views virtually, <laughs> under 100. Yeah. And then one of my colleagues, he keeps calling me, he says, hey, how's that video going on your, uh, on your Soupmate Pro? <laughs> I made a video about drinking alkaline soup mm. and it had like 5,000 views all for free. Mm. <laughs> I filmed it off my phone with bad yeah. audio, mm -hmm. but people loved it. They wanted to know and they asked more questions about that particular thing. And it was a shock to me because I realized that people were watching and mm -hmm. they were engaging with that real social behind the scenes content. Mm -hmm. Yes, they were still watching the other stuff, but they weren't commenting. Yeah. But the lifestyle stuff, definitely engagement there. And that felt good. Okay, so the effort was worth it. What do they say about the lemon? Is the, is the juice worth the squeeze? <laughs> and yeah. it is, but you got to do it consistently. Yeah, for sure. As people build their businesses, uh, they're they're on tight budgets. Uh, they got limited budgets. Oftentimes, they're bootstrapping. Mm -hmm. uh, in your opinion, what percentage of revenues should marketing budgets be, and what type of return should people look at it? And when when we talk about return, I want to think not just be not just the dollars, but more about the intangibles. What's the return? Mm. on that time invested? Mm. It's, it's an interesting question because I think actually the marketing budget should be higher at the beginning um, versus sort of what they should net out to if, the, if, if businesses are trying to attract uh, clients. So, I mean, and I'm talking about like I launched Ben & Jerry's Ice Cream in Australia and our marketing badge, budget was 25% of our revenue because it was a smaller pot to get going. And then as we grew, it turned into 10%. So if we want to kind of then translate that into what does it look like for small business, that 25% of the, the pie to start with might look like more like doing the doing for you. So it might be you're investing your time um, as opposed to necessarily budget, because you might not even have any budget to start with, right? So you might be going to networking events, you might be meeting as many people as possible, you might be trying to do contra to get your product out there, you might be doing beta rounds, beta testing of your um, online course, um, you might be doing sampling, free sampling of your product. So really what you're trying to do at the start is kind of get that um, feedback, get case studies, get testimonials, and um, it's almost you're in the ideation phase and you need to prove the concept. 
right? And once you, and, and, and that's where I, I was talking about Contra before to prove your concept, bigger, bigger companies would use bigger marketing budgets to try and prove that concept and put it into sampling and things like that. But you can be creative, like your friends, you know, friends of friends, you know, you can even send it to influencers. I have a lot of clients who send a lot of product to influencers. Um, and, and ask them if they'll post if, in exchange for free product. So you can be really resourceful um, to try and um, get your marketing message out there, but maybe you want to invest more of your time. Because as you said, there's no point in having, as you said before, with the high quality creation, that if, if you don't have media behind it or if, you're, or if no one's seeing it, there's actually no point in spending money creating the product or the service or whatever it is to start with. You need to spend equally as much time and energy um, getting that, product out there. So once you kind of have gotten to the prove your concept stage, what you want to do is you want to start sort of amplifying that. So get as many video testimonials as you can. One thing I did when I started is I got about 50 video testimonials. Every single person who I was working with, I got a video testimonial from that I was, um, you know, because that, that is almost like um, influencer marketing or um, referral marketing in the digital space, right? So um, partnerships are really, really good. So who um, can refer you in because people trust people that refer them in who they know, right? So that's a that's a great way without spending a lot of money on digital marketing or, um, you know, other kind of marketing tactics. PR, there's a lot of great online platforms like Source Bottle where you can look to get some PR yourself and you can be connected with journalists. Um, there's also a podcasting version of that, Matchmaker FM, who you can go on and start trying to get onto podcasts to spread your message. That's also not money, but it's time, right? Um, starting an email list and starting to email them, that's another free form of marketing. Like I said, LinkedIn, 20% organic reach your Instagram stories, you know, that's all kind of free. It does take a lot of time, but, but it's all free, right? Um, so that's kind of where I would start. Definitely guest podcasting, um, guest appearances on blogs, uh, looking for online communities or Facebook groups is another great one. Facebook communities, maybe it's, maybe you've got a product and you want to put it in your local community. So you find a local Facebook group where it's so your local community and you post your product there. Um, and I would always say it's the way you do something, not what you do that matters. So if you do it in a general, a, um, a generous, vulnerable kind of way that is kind of, you know, I, I would love some feedback on these products or, you know, kind of trying to find a way in that's not salesy, um, I find works really well for me and my clients. So um, conferences are another great one. See if you can get speaking. Uh, all of these you can kind of start to do for free um, if you kind of are connecting with the right people. And I would just say get out there and meet as many people as you can at the beginning, right? Put yourself in as many networking situations as you can um, to meet as many people and you'll get, you know, experience at your elevator pitch and you'll you'll find that doors will start to open. Mm -hmm. 2013, I started to do webinars. And so I had an advertising budget and I had to get my message out in front of a new audience. And I'd spent a lot of money on the Facebook ads, but unfortunately nobody showed up to the webinar. And I had to ask myself the question at the start of the webinar, do I turn go to webinar off or do I just pretend that everybody's still here? So I thought, well, I've spent the money on the advertising and I've got the leads, nobody's here, I'll just deliver the webinar. So I delivered the webinar and I was really proud of the content. And then I thought to myself, if I could be really resourceful right now, how could I repurpose this content? So I took the webinar and I put it into a book and then I attempted to sell the book and then the book didn't sell. And then I thought to myself, well, instead of trying to sell the book, why don't I just give it away? So I gave the book away to business people and they started to read the book and they'd get a couple of pages in that say, this is exactly what we're looking for. And then I realized my market wanted something in print. And if I could put it in their hand, they wouldn't throw it away because it was a book, mm -hmm. but they'd read at least a couple of pages. And that led to hundreds of thousands of dollars in sales in that mm -hmm. year. But it didn't stop there because the book I could read purpose over and over and again. So what cost me a couple of thousand dollars at the start and a lot of time because I had my time was free mm -hmm. has turned into millions of dollars of revenues on the back end. Mm -hmm. And it's about getting resourceful as well. 
even going to networking events. I've been to networking events all the way back in 2017, and people are still buying today. So the input was a lot of time waking up mm-hmm. at 4am, going for a lot of breakfasts, but the return has been customer retention and referrals for years that followed. Mm-hmm. And I think we've got to think about our inputs, but also how we can be resourceful and get the most out of it. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Because if we can do that, we can go a long way. In your opinion, what marketing tactics are the most effective for a business preparing for the growth phase? Oh, that's that's really interesting. I would say that um, I love a combination. So as you're entering the growth phase, I, I feel like that's when you start to get some money that you have available to put behind ads to kind of go beyond the people that know you that know your network you know and so that's when i feel like you start depending on your industry you can start going into things like google ads um some people for some people who don't have keywords who um are particularly in a competitive industry then seo can be really good blogging blogging's great anyway because you can share it in linkedin um, as thought leadership content um you can also do like Instagram. I was talking to a client just just before who um, is an architect, and we're looking at um, Instagram ads because Instagram's really good for him. But what we're looking at the tactic is actually um, he is featured in quite a few different magazines. So we're going to actually use the feature in the magazines as an endorsement as the ad, right? So I think it's actually about the way that you do things um, that and the, what the messaging is that is the effectiveness. But Instagram ads are going to be great for him. Um, I've got other B2B clients doing webinars really successfully. Um, and I actually just had a client who um, came to me and she's like, Laura, I got six new businesses this week. And she like a, a new business for her is worth $25,000, right? So it's, it was a big week. And what that was, was just a consistent effort over a long period of time. So, I mean, and it wasn't even that long. I guess it was like two months we'd been really consistent for, but it was blogging. It was posting consistently on LinkedIn. It was really good thought leadership content. Um, it was, we're doing one email out to her database and she had 800 people in her database every month. So it's not trying to overwhelm, just trying to sort of get a few different touch points in a few different places. Um, And then we're also doing a little bit of outreach as well. And another tactic we're doing, which is going really well, is she was sending like cute little lip balms to um, clients because she's an aged care recruiter. She was sending little lip balms to clients that um, either candidates she'd interviewed that have been successful or um, clients that she'd placed. And actually she's like, those lip balms cost me $3 and they are one of the most successful things we've done in like relationship marketing. So um, it's just, it's it's all the consistent effort in all the different places. And I heard recently, actually, it's gone up the number of touch points that you need um, to, um, to get well, to touch people with until um, they've seen your content or they're going to respond to it. And it's and it's up to sort of 18 to 30. So you just got to think about what are all of those touch points. Um, and that's that's for someone who's cold, right? So somebody who knows you, that's why I think when you're, when you're in sort of um, ideation or startup phase, just go for the people that know you and the people that know the people who know you. You know, like that's kind of you find your market within that. Obviously, your market is specific to your product and your um, audience you're trying to reach, but they're much warmer to start with. And then once you move beyond that into a colder market, you need kind of 18 to 30 touch points. And so what are you doing consistently? Um, And I think one of the biggest ways people kind of – fall off the bandwagon in marketing is they think marketing doesn't work because they've done it for a month or they've done it for two months and they haven't gotten sales yet, you know, and uh, that's unfortunately not the way marketing works. It's consistent effort over a long period of time. I mean, think about the the giants in the world. They've actually built their business over 30, 40 years of spending millions and millions and millions of dollars a year, right? So um, it's just what are those consistent touch points? What is the quality of the content you're putting out? Not the quantity, the quality. Um, and, um, you know, is there kind of, do you have that consistent rhythm in your business? 